everyone, and welcome to episode 7 of Speckled Red Knits, the podcast. My name is Julianne. I am a knitter, crafter, sewer from Cleveland, Ohio, and this is my little podcast that's mostly about knitting, sometimes about sewing. Um, This is our seventh episode. Wow! I can't believe that we stuck with this that long. (laughs) Um... I guess we started this podcast back during quarantine, and um, I guess things haven't really changed that much because we're kind of back in quarantine because things have gotten so bad. Um, But, wow, episode seven, I did it. um, I guess I never thought about getting this far. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Uh, Before we get things started with knitting content, I do want to go over a couple of announcements. And the first announcement is that our knit along has ended. Um, So if you've been watching these past couple of episodes, um, you might have heard and you might have participated in the knit along that just happened. It was called the Small Things Knit Along. And our um, objective for the knit along was to knit something small um, for the upcoming cold weather um and at least my intention with it was to knit something for someone else and put it away and have it ready for Christmas um because I am notorious for starting my gift knitting late so we uh just concluded that knit along it was supposed to end November 1st but I ended up leaving the thread open a little bit um longer so I'm just gonna pull up who the winner is um and the um if you want to go back and look at what everyone knit, did, I'll leave the ravel really below, but the thread's closed now. Anyway, the person that won the Knit Along prize drawing, um, her name is Jelly Kelly Knits, and she knit these beautiful mittens. I hope you can see that. I've never showed something on my phone on screen. But she knit these beautiful mittens with this little textured panel down the front. Um, I love knitting mittens. I think they are one of... Um, the most like underrated knit items because they are so warm um and they're just they're really they're you could make them super cute but they're also utilitarian they don't take that much time and they're like genuinely wonderful so I love the pattern she used I think it they were called moonstone mittens um but anyway she uh won the random drawing that we did Um, for the knit along and I'm going to reach out to you on Ravelry and get that sent over to you. She won one one of my speckled red uh, co bags, uh, my knitting bags. Um, And on the topic of knitting bags, I just wanted to go over real quick what's going to be in the shop update. The shop update will be November 28th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, And this will be the I guess Christmas winter update. Um, I'm gonna have just a couple of prints in there. Um, one print that I have that isn't necessarily Christmassy, but it's really special and people seem to love it um, is this bag. This is a uh, medium bag. I don't know why I call it medium because I stopped making the small bag, so I guess I should start calling this a small. But um, this is a great size for socks, and this is the Rifle Paper Alice in Wonderland print super cute um they stopped making this fabric for a while and it just came back into stock um and so i was able to get some more of it and i thought that christmas would be a great time to put these back in the shop so if you like alice in wonderland this is seriously the cutest fabric look at the little bunny on there um and whenever i make these they always sell out so i'm excited to have these back in the shop Another one is more of a winter bag. These are holly berries with this lovely, cute little, like, blush pink gingham. I love gingham. I probably say that every every episode, but, um, yeah, this is the medium size again. Super cute. And this one is, like, the Christmas, like, the legitimate, like, Christmas bag themed bag that I made um I just think this is so cute with that red check on the bottom um it has all these little different um winter winter vignettes I thought this one was super cute um so this will likely be the only 
Christmas update I do just because um, it, it's kind of hard to do holiday bags because you don't want them sitting around. So this is probably um, the only update that will have Christmas bags in it. Um, and all of these prints except well both of the like winter Christmas prints that I did I'm only doing the medium bag um that seems to be the most popular especially for like the holiday themed bags so um this is the size that's really good for socks and just smaller projects um you could probably fit actually you can fit two skeins in here so um it is a pretty versatile size and people seem to like that one the most so to maximize the yardage of fabric um, I decided to just do this medium size. So here's my hand. Maybe you can get some perspective. Um, but yes, these will be in the shop November 28th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. I will put a link to my shop down below. Um, I don't think we have any more announcements yet. I haven't started our next knit along yet, but it's going to be coming up. And the theme is probably going to be sweater knitting. So if you want to join in next time and you have your eyes on the sweater's quantity of yarn. Um, that's probably going to be what our next knit along is. I haven't decided on the time yet though, because you know it's kind of the holidays, um, and I know people are you know busy gift knitting, and so maybe maybe it'll be like a Christmas Eve cast on or something like that. Um, but yeah, that'll be coming up. Uh, I don't think there are any other announcements. Um, I will link everything that you hear in the episode below, probably. <laughs> Um, and on that note, let's get into some knitting. So I don't have a ton of uh, works in progress to show for this podcast because I'm so busy gift knitting and I can't really show the things that I'm gift knitting on the podcast right now. But as always, I do have a sock on the needles and I'm not going to lie, I haven't worked on this in a hot minute, but... Um, this pattern, um, the pattern name is called Hermione's Everyday Socks, and um, it is like this really lovely textured stitch. I'm trying to kind of like pull this so that you can see the textured stitch. Um, it's a free pattern, so I don't feel, um, I think it's okay to talk about how it's constructed. Um, it is just like this offset, like knit three pearl one um texture and then you knit around and then the next one is like knit one pearl one so it's offset the so it's a four row repeat so i think the first row is knit three pearl one knit around and then the next row is knit one pearl one knit two so it ends up still being like knit three pearl one but it's offset because of that first stitch and you kind of get I don't I don't really know how to explain this texture but it's nice it's um I don't know it's kind of like a nubby texture um I haven't knit socks like this before just because um I don't know I just really like when socks are are just I like plain vanilla socks to knit honestly because I don't sit down to knit socks really and uh so when I when I do work on a sock, it's usually just because, like, I need something really easy to knit. Um, so, honestly, I mean, I'm, like, sitting here knitting this round right now. <laughs> um, these, these aren't that difficult to knit. I actually, um, I cast these on, like, in October, and I really wanted to knit these for the fall because the colorway is called, I think it's called Spice Cider. It's a Madeline Tosh colorway. And I really wanted to knit them for the fall because of the colorway name. Um, but that kind of didn't happen just because I got, like, so into gift knitting. Um, but to testify that this is still, like, a really easy sock pattern, um, I actually, when I went to go do early voting, I stood outside. I just stayed outside for, like, two hours. And I just stood there, and I knit this sock. Um, and it was two hours, but it definitely didn't feel like it. Um, and I, I actually got like a decent amount done. <laughs> I just sat there and like listened to my podcast and knit this sock. So, um, this is a really nice pattern. If you want something that's a little bit, um, 
just like something a little bit different from a vanilla sock, but still pretty easy. I think this is a really good sock. Um, and it's also, I was worried that like I'd have to keep track of the rows, but it's actually pretty easy to kind of see. Um, Cause you can see the pearl bumps, like you can see them kind of on the round. So you know if you're doing a knit round and then it's easy to tell um, which of the textured stitch rounds you're on. So yeah, these are lovely. And I'm excited to finish them because I feel like this texture is gonna feel really cool like on the bottom of my foot. I wish you could feel this through the camera cause it's just like um, really, a really cozy texture. So I don't know when I'll finish these. It would be nice to finish them before Thanksgiving because then it's still kind of like a fall sock. Um, otherwise it's kind of like, these are definitely not December socks. So maybe I'll finish them, maybe I won't. Uh, but they'll definitely be done for fall next year. So not much else to say about these. I'm just knitting these on the size one childhood needles that I always do because the cord is so nice. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about these. So I, I think I need to preface this next work in project, work in project, work in progress by explaining what I'm wearing. So this sweater, I knit this probably two years ago. It's called Mountain Mist. It's by Tinky and Knits. Um, it's a worsted weight uh, pattern. And it's just, it's really easy color work. I think this is the first color work sweater that I officially knit. And um, I wear this all the time. Like this is, I think it's just the colors. It makes me feel like, I don't know, I, I, I belong like in a ski lodge, but in the 70s. Um, so this is, I just love this sweater so much. Um, the top colors are done in uh, Quince & Co. It's their, I want to say it's their Lark base what I always get them mixed up all their bases are named after birds and I just get them confused but it is their worsted weight 100% wool um, yarn and it comes in a ton of colors it comes in like 80 colors or something and it's nice for color work because the skeins are like 120 yard skeins and they're like eight or nine dollars so uh, typically with color work you don't need like a full like 200 yard skein of yarn um so uh they're, it's really nice for color work. And they have a bunch of different weights um, and they're all in the same. The palette is the same across all the yarns except for one that's like an alpaca base. Um, so uh, this, all these colors, um, I had leftovers of them and I've been wanting to knit what I'm working on right now for a while, but I bought the pattern and it was 13 pages and I saw that it was 13 pages and I said, hmm, I don't know about that. Um, but uh, the reason that I wanted to tell you about the sweater that I'm wearing is because when I show you this, you're gonna be like, oh, um, are you knitting that to match you? And I'm not. So let me show you what I'm knitting. Um, this is a, a stuffed animal by Susan B. Anderson. It's her Oliver the Pig pattern. Um, and so <laughs> his sweater kind of matches mine. So the pink for the head is this pink up here. I think it's called Shell. Um, and his little sweater is the same color as mine. <laughs> and the little color work is done in this orange. Um, so I had always wanted to knit this pattern and now we have um, some of our, our friends, they have a baby now and so I'm gonna knit this for them. Um, and um, so I just, I used all the scraps that I had left over from the sweater because it was like the perfect amount. So if you're like a worsted weight sweater knitter and you have leftover yarn, this is such a perfect project because even like the head doesn't use up that much yarn. Um, and you know, the sweater hardly uses up anything. Um, so basically you knit um, the head and then you join on his little sweater body. Um, you put these little pearl markers um, to like mark for, this is where the sleeves and his arms will come off. And you knit the sweater all the way down to about like here where my fingers are. And then you cast on his little like lower body. 
Um, I actually had the whole sweater part finished yesterday, but I messed up the color work. Um, when I knit color work, I typically mark the repeats with stitch markers. I see, you know, like when you work color work, you have that little chart that's just like one iteration of, you know, the repeat. So, you know, if you have like an eight stitch um, color work chart, it repeats those eight stitches, you know, so many times around the sweater. And I always mark it. So if it's an eight stitch color work chart, I mark every eight stitches because I just, I, I'm like one of those people that double checks everything. And I hate ripping back. And so um, I do that. So it's, it's easier to check and make sure that like you didn't get off by a stitch because you know, then it's, it's hard to tell because then you would have to knit that round for it to come down and see like if you got it right. Um, so I messed up the color work because I didn't mark it because it's just this little itty bitty, itty bitty pig sweater and I didn't mark it and I messed it up. And I, and I told myself because you have to kind of like, um, steam the sweater and then, so it lays flat um, and then you end up stuffing that before you put like the lower body on. But um, when I was steaming it, I'm like, oh, man, I messed this up. <laughs> and I told myself I could live with it. And before I continued on, because I have this bad habit of saying I can live with it. And then like the next day I can't. So I saw that it was messed up and I said, oh, I can live with this. But I told myself to sleep on it before I cast on like, cause it, it's kind of hard to cast on the body. You have to watch a video. Um, and <laughs> I didn't want to have to like tick back from there. And, um, so I slept on it and then I woke up this morning and I'm like, I'm really glad I did start on the next step because it turns out I can't live with it. Um, so what else can I say about this? Um, I mentioned that the pattern is very long. The pattern is 13 pages. Um, and I wanna say there's probably like a page for each step of the body. And I wanted to know this a while ago, but like I, I, like I said, I bought the pattern and it said 13 pages. And I said, maybe another day. So like to do the head, that was probably like a page and a half. And then the ears, which were really easy to knit, that was a whole page. So she really gives you a lot of instruction on how to knit these like individual components. Um, so it is 13 pages, but there's a lot of explanation. And um, so if this is like your first time knitting a toy, this is my first time knitting a toy. Um, she has great patterns, Susan B. She has all kinds of super cute patterns. She has a panda bear that has like a little hooded cardigan on. She has this one, she has a bear that has a little like Halloween costume. Um, she, she has a giraffe. She has all kinds. They're super cute. Um, so in the pattern, she actually has you use um, double pointed needles, but I needed size five double pointed needles and I couldn't find them anywhere. I found one. So I know at some point I had them. Does anyone else have this problem where you like lose your double pointed needles? I don't know where they go. Like is there some place in my life where all my lost needles are? And I wish I could find it, that magical place that takes all the needles. But anyway, I couldn't find the size five double pointed needles and I didn't want to go out and buy them. So I magic looped it. And I'm not going to lie, it's kind of fussy to do it on magic loop because you're knitting, this is a worsted weight yarn, and you're knitting these on size fives, which is pretty, like that's a small needle size. And it has to be a small needle size so that when you stuff it the stuffing isn't like coming out of the stitches so your needles are tight on there and it's not like the easiest to knit double uh on magic loop so i don't know i think I'll, I'll probably finish it out um with the magic loop just because i don't feel like going to the store and maybe the next time i knit it um i'll knit it with the double pointed needles because i think it would be a little bit easier so I think the only thing that's really difficult about this is that, you know, it is a tighter gauge. Um, you do have to pick up a lot of stitches, like 
to attach to different body parts, but she has you mark them, like I said, with these little pearl rows. So you do this little row of, you know, just like pearls, um, and it makes it super easy to pick it up. So you do that for the ears. So in between this these two layers, because this is kind of like a tube, um, there was a little pearl ridge. And it makes it really easy to pick up stitches. Um, so yeah, I think the hardest part was doing the head, and that wasn't even that hard. Um, and I'm so, I'm excited to get him done. I think this will be this is going to be a, a sweet present. And I I don't think they watch my podcast, but if they do, just be surprised. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. I think it's so special to make things for babies, like handmade things. And um, I think to me, when I give something handmade to someone for a baby, I just I don't want it to be like precious. I just want them to use it. Like, it would make me so happy to have to, like, sew these ears back on one day. Um, when I was a kid, my mom made me a quilt for my bed. And I I think I used that quilt up until middle school. And it was in tatters. Like, absolute tatters. Um, and I still have the tatters somewhere. But um, I think, I don't know. That just makes me so happy when you make something for someone. And it gets just, you know, completely, like, used up. Um, so I hope that Oliver doesn't look this cute for a long time. I hope he gets, he's well loved. Um, and I hope I'm done with this for the next podcast so that I can show you. Because he's looking so cute. Look at those little ears. They're so cute. So this podcast, I don't have a ton of finished objects to show you because I'm doing a lot of gift knitting. And um, I actually finished another entire sweater that I could have shown on this episode, but I can't show it because it's for my mom. And if I said, like right now, if I said, Mom, stop watching this, she wouldn't. She's, she is not a secret person. She, I told her this sweater was for Christmas, and she tried to get me to give it to her early. And uh, so I can't show it right now because she, she would just look. And she, she like, kind of knows. I let her pick out the color, and I kind of showed her what the cardigan would be. But um, I'm not going to show it to her. And if I put it on this podcast, she's going to look and, and ruin Christmas. So there is another whole sweater that I, I have finished, but I can't show it to you right now. Fortunately, it's very similar to the sweater that I did finish that I'm going to show you. Um, I talked about this a lot on my last podcast, so I'm going to try and not go into too much detail on it. I'll give, just give you the highlights. Um, this uh, yarn is um, Peace Fleece. That is a brand. Um, and the colorway is called Morning Dove. Um, they're out of stock of this right now. They, they're out of stock of a ton of colors. I'm really bummed because um, I really wanted to ask. There were a couple of colors I liked that I was going to ask for. For my, my birthday and Christmas, they're kind of close together. Um, and I usually ask for like a sweater's quantity of yarn and it's like not it's peace fleece is not outrageously priced so I don't feel bad asking for it I think it's like $12 for a 200 yard skein and it's worsted weight um, but it's this yarn is like my favorite yarn it has uh, mohair in it it's like 18% mohair and then the rest is wool and it's just very dimensional so I'm going to hold this up just so you can see like all the tweedy flex in there it's kind of like my only um, requirement for our yarn is that I don't like it to be, like I don't like commercial yarn um, because it's very like one dimensional. So I love yarn like this where it's just like, there's so many different colors in this yarn. Like, let's see, let me see if I can pick one out. Like right there, like there's that little yellow fleck they have another um, colorway, I think it's called Grassroots, I'm pretty sure, and it's kind of like this sage green, and it has all these different like colorful flecks mixed in with it. Um, and I, I knit a cardigan in that too. I knit the same cardigan in that yarn. Um, the yarn is called Worsted, worsted Weight. I would say it, it's maybe a little bit more on the Aran side of Worsted, so it, it's a little bit thicker than like a traditional like it's definitely thicker than this yarn um this uh the top I said was the Lark by Quince and Co and then the body is actually Dererum Natura it's their worsted base um 
I don't think I said this earlier, but this sweater is super warm. This is the main body, um, the Durer Natura. It's a woolen spun merino, and it's un it's not super washed. And this is like the warmest sweater. I love it so much. Back to what I was talking about. Um, yes, this is definitely just a little bit thicker than a worsted weight, just a tiny bit. Um, so if you're, I would if you're gonna use this as a worsted weight yarn, I would definitely recommend gauge swatching because I. It is, it's definitely, like on size nines, I want to say, let me just look at this. I want to say I was getting like four stitches to the inch. So I, I feel like that's kind of high. And I definitely, I don't know. I want to say I wouldn't knit this on anything less than a nine, maybe an eight, but I feel like it would be tight because this is like a dense fabric. Um, so anyway, so we talked about the yarn, about how much I love Peace Fleece. I talked about in the last episode how I had already knit this sweater, but this cable panel that I put in there was so tight because you're crossing over so many stitches um, that the front of the sweater came in like this. It came up towards the center because the cables were pulling it up because that the cables along the side, they were really tight and it made the fabric um, shorter there and I just couldn't stand it and I tried to fix it and you the issue with knitting a cardigan is that like if you knit a like a stock knit sweater like this and I didn't like the length you know you can just like rip back um and fix that but you can't do that because this is flat stock in it not stock in it in the round so you you cannot unfortunately just rip out this edge and have like the right stitches like live stitches um, and that's what I tried to do, and I knew it would have worked because I've done it before and had meltdowns about it before, um, but I still tried to do it, and then it just, it just looked bad, and so I decided to completely unravel the sweater and re-knit it, and I'm glad I did because I, gen I think this might be my favorite color from Peace Fleece, um, and I love this sweater pattern. Um, it's called Edith and it's, I'm pretty sure it's by Pam Allen. Um, it just hangs so nicely and this yarn is just like, it's really nice in this pattern. So if you kind of see along this edge, there's sort of a seam right there. And that's because you knit the sweater, um, you're knitting it all as one piece up until about the armholes and then you divide it into, um, the back half, half of the stitches go to the back and then the other half they're divided into two um, and those are separated to knit the front pieces so you end up with the back piece and then two front pieces like that and then they get um, you do a three needle bind off right here um, to uh, finish it and so it kind of looks like a vest so those two pieces so the three pieces that are separate, um, they have to be separated so that you can get the armhole. Um, and then you just pick up the sleeves and uh, knit to the end. So I've knit this sweater many times and I don't wanna talk about it too much because I talked about it a lot in the last episode. Um, and I just kind of modified the original pattern, the Edith pattern, so the original sweater pattern, it's much longer. Um, it has like a different, um, panel that goes along the edges and I just like kind of change it out um because I knit the sweater this is the fifth time I've knit it <laughs> and I don't want a bunch of sweaters that look the same so um yes this is such a nice length now the sweater is so warm I think you could wear this as like a jacket honestly um that's how warm this yarn is like it is just so fluffy the yarn really softens a lot when you block it um it it kind of feels scra I mean it is still scratchy like I I wear this with a long sleeve t-shirt under um and on rare occasion I'll wear it with a short sleeve t-shirt underneath and I'm like ooh, that's that's wool so um it is scratchier in the skin though once you block it like it really like softens up and just blooms very nicely so um, again, this is the Edith cardigan with a lot of modifications. 
Um, you can go back to the last episode, and I talked about all the modifications I made before. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm glad to have this sweater in my closet again. I felt like because I got the yarn for my birthday last year, I felt like I had to finish this. Like I had to finish re knitting it before my birthday again. <laughs> like it couldn't just like exist in this project bag, like all mangled. Um, so it is finished for my birthday. <laughs> um, and I'm just really happy to have this. I have all this sweaters, like a sweaters quantity of yarn that I need to knit through. And I just kept thinking about how this is like the one thing that I really wanted in my wardrobe because it's just this neutral mauve that kind of goes with everything. And so there's a lot that I want to be knitting right now, but I just felt like I had to knit the sweater um, to have in my wardrobe. And I'm so glad that I did because it's just lovely. It's so cozy. And I'm really glad that I re -knit it. It seemed a little excessive, but I'm so glad that I re -knit it. My only other truly finished object this week is this hat that I knit. Um, I talked about this on the last podcast, and this was my own personal entry for our knit along, even though I didn't win the bag because I make them and I already took them for myself. <laughs> and I don't think I can win my own knit along. I don't think that's allowed. But I wanted to participate in the event that I was online event, online forum that I had. Um, this pattern is called Pull the Wool Over. It is a pattern that is free. It's by Espoche Tricot, and it calls for a bulky weight yarn. I didn't have any bulky weight yarn, so what I did was I held um, this lovely single ply merino worsted yarn. It was hand dyed with um, a strand of uh, fingering weight yarn. And in the original pattern, I think they actually did hold like a worsted with a mohair. So it gives you a very similar gauge. Um, this is going to be a gift knit. Um, I'm not a hat person. It just like, it takes all the volume out of my hair. So I never wear hats really. I have one hat that my mom made me that I wear when I walk the dog in the winter. Um, but just like going out, I don't know. It just makes this fluffier than it already is so um this hat will be given away and I am not going to say who it's for because I don't know who watches my podcast but I'm so happy with the way this turned out um I actually kind of love it reversed too I might like it more reversed let me show you with the wrong side showing um but I don't know I just think these colors work so lovely together the um, Worsted Weight Yarn was by McMullen Fiber Company, um, and it was kind of like, it was like kind of a pale white, and then you can see like all the different specks in it, um, and then the other yarn that I held with it was, um, it was like a half skein that I had left over from another project of Pearl Soho, it was their line weight yarn, which is um, a fingering weight, like a uh, single ply merino. And it was in this colorway called um, Rose Quartz. So that kind of like dusty pink that you see in there, that's a fingering weight yarn. Um, I'm not sure if Pearl Soho still makes that yarn line, um, but they, all of their colors that they make for their yarn, I just, they're, they're all neutrals, but they're really unique neutrals. So they have, um, they're just like very dimensional. So um, that was the color I, I loved. And I actually knit a cardigan out of that yarn. And I don't know why I knit that. Because, it first of all, it was fingering weight. And it was a cardigan. So I had to knit flat stockinette in fingering weight yarn. We just hung up these string lights so I'm worried they're going to fall. I just heard crinkles. Um, okay, it stopped. They might fall. So we hear it a bang. That's what it is. Anyway, uh, the cardigan I knit with that yarn. Um, so, like, it, it was a ton of knitting. And I knit it with a single ply merino. Why did I do that? Like, if you're familiar with, like, the single ply yarns, like, they're lovely and they take the dye really nicely, especially when they're hand dyed. They look so nice. But they're not, like, because it's just a single ply, um, they, they're very soft, but they're not like very sturdy. So they pill a lot. So I've hardly ever worn that cardigan just because it's so, um, 
like it's it's just like it's delicate and I don't want to ruin it so um, I'm glad I was able to at least put some of that yarn to good use in this hat um, I don't think I block this I don't really block hats but um, I really love this pattern I, and I actually somewhere I couldn't find it but I have another hat that I'm knitting as a gift to that's um, in the same pattern so I would put it on if it didn't mess up my hair to show you but it does look super cute on um, so again, this is pulled a little over by Spashiko and it's free. Um, it, it, it knits up super, super fast because it's not a fold over brim. Um, it's just meant to be kind of like slouchy. Um, that's the thing with hats is that they're fast unless the brim is a fold over brim and then you have to knit like twice the amount. So you would, you would have to knit like down to here for it to fold over. Um, so there is a one hat pattern that I knit pretty often. It's just the Pearl Soho, like super easy hat, or like, I don't know, I think it's called classic hat, something classic. Um, but it's just like a really um, traditional hat pattern and it has a fold over brim. And I always think it's gonna take me so much less time than it does because that brim takes forever and it's, you know, like ribbing, so it takes longer, but um, and the only th other thing I can think to say about this is that in the pattern, it has you knit four by four ribs. So you're knitting, um, instead of knitting two of these, you would be knitting like, it would be four, uh, four stitches in between, you, you know what I'm saying. The rib would be four. I knit two by two. And that's just what I wanted to say real quick was that the pattern calls for four by four rib and I knit two by two rib um mostly because I just forgot and then I started to knit it on the second one and it just looked like it was going to be too big like with the ribbing like that so in the second hat I knit I did try to do the four by four um and I didn't like it so you can do whatever you want but I did two by two rib and I really like this hat pattern so those lights I was talking about they did fall down <laughs> It's just this one hook, like it, it won't stay on this one hook, but it did just fall down two seconds before we started this clip. Um, so this is not technically an FO, but I'm calling it an FO because you haven't seen it. And I did sort of finish it and I don't have that much more knitting to talk about. So technically these were from last year. Um, these are the world's simplest mittens by Tin Can Knits, and um, the yarn is called Vintage Christmas. It's either Vintage Christmas or Vintage Candy Cane, um, but it is by this hand spinner. She makes hand spun yarn, and um, last year she like previewed this yarn in August, and she did pre-orders for a skein of it. And I just like could knock it over how amazing this yarn was. And I want to say like to get, it was like an 80 yard or 100 yard skein. Um, and it's like a bulky weight, but it's hand spun. So it's kind of hard to tell. Um, I want to say it was like $50, <laughs> but I bought it and I'm happy I bought it because this yarn is amazing. So I'm just going to like hold these up for you. So you can just look at this yarn and like all of the little bits that are in there there's glitter in there um I just this so looks like Christmas like a vintage Christmas in a yarn and I, I love these um the reason that these are I'm counting these as kind of an FO is because um when I knit these last year I want to say the ribbing started maybe like two rows before this thumb and I didn't totally love the yarn I used for the ribbing because I, I wanted like this light pink, but I didn't have um, a yarn that was thick enough to match this. Like, so I think this is the, when I knit the pattern for these mittens, um, so the world's simplest mittens pattern comes with um, dimensions to do like fingering, spore, worsted, and bulky. Um, and I think I knit the bulky version of the pattern. So um, the yarn that I used for the ribbing originally, I didn't love. I, I held like a fingering weight yarn, like triple. 
And I just didn't love it. And because the ribbing started, like, so high up, they always fell off my hands. Um, so basically, like, the ribbing started here at this point, and I didn't like it. I never, I didn't wear them because I'm just fussy like that. If things don't fit right, I just don't wear them. Um, so I did fiber share over the summer. I've done fiber share a couple of times. Um, it's this program where you sign up and you pay like five bucks and you get matched with, um, another fiber enthusiast and you send, um, they send you yarn and then you send yarn to someone else. Um, and she sent me this, uh, pink yarn. Um, and I saw it and I said, oh my gosh, that would be so perfect for these mittens that I love, but never wear. Um, and I ended up holding it with some mohair, so it's a little bit fluffy. Um, but so what I did was I still had a little bit of the yarn left, and I added about an inch um, of this yarn, and then I redid the ribbing. So um, I haven't woven in the ends from doing that. Um, but so now these are like, these are perfect. And I'm so, I'm so excited to wear these. Um, when I knit them originally too, it, these are, they're kind of hard to get on because the edge is a little bit tight, but honestly, I'd rather have it be tight than have them be falling off. Um, when I knit them originally, I didn't block them and I don't know why this is a little bit pointy here. I tried to block that out. Oh, it's fine. Um, but when I knit them, they were just like the tiniest bit short, but I hadn't blocked them. Um, so I ended up, you know, when I redid them, I blocked them and now they're like, perfect. they're the perfect size. Um, and they're so cute. <laughs> Just look at these. Oh my gosh. This yarn. She ended up, the pre-orders last year were so popular that she didn't, she didn't do it again this year because it took her so long to get through like all the pre-orders. Cause she has to like, she dyes the yarn or not the yarn, she dyes the uh, roving before she spins it. So she does that all herself. Um, so she had to like do all of that and then spin the yarn for people on top of it. So she didn't do pre-orders this year. She did have some in a shop update that already happened. Um, the only way I think you could possibly get it is she had mentioned that she might have some yarn at this, um, this one yarn store, it's called Le, Le Mercier. I don't know, it's in French, but it's an, it's like a US-based yarn store. Um, I'll link it below. Um, she said that she might have some of the yarn um, just as like a special through this shop. Um, I get the newsletter for that shop and I haven't seen her like post that yet. So I don't know if that's still happening. Um, if it does happen, it hasn't happened yet. So if you really want this yarn, um, I can leave the link to um, that yarn store below. Um, and if you really want to find out about it, you do have to subscribe to her newsletter because that's kind of when she lets people know about things. But anyway, oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Look at that little bit of glitter right there. <laughs> these are so extra and I just love them. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that these are like wearable again because this yarn is so special. And I just left these sitting out on my dresser. Um, for like a whole year and I would just look at them and say wow look at that yarn I think I would like hand spinning my dad keeps trying to get me to do it I don't know why I think he wants to do it and he just wants me to get all the stuff so that he can secretly do it when I'm not home um but I think I would like hand spinning I don't think I would like it though on like the drop spindle um I think I would like it using the wheel, but the wheels cost like a thousand dollars or maybe that's, maybe the really nice ones cost that much, but I think you're definitely in it for a couple hundred dollars at least to buy a spinning wheel. So in the meantime, I just buy it from other people who make it. I have another pair of mittens that are in hand spun yarn too, and I just love them so much. Um, if you've never made mittens, make them because these are so warm, like so much warmer than gloves. Like even like those fancy, like, um, you know, like Snowstopper Adventurer glove. They have nothing. Like my hands are sweating in these right now. They are so warm um, and they're so quick to knit. 
Um, and the World Simplest Mittens Pattern by Tin Can is, is free, and it has it for, like, every weight of yarn. It has it for, like, babies up to adults. It's a really easy um, pattern to knit. I'll link it below. Um, but, yeah, this is my only other FO this week. I think it's a pretty special FO, though. And I'm just going to leave you with this little picture of this beautiful yarn. I know I've said before that there won't always be a stash acquisition segment, um, but there is this week because I bought some yarn uh, during the virtual Rhinebeck um, weekend. Uh, Rhinebeck was canceled this year, and if you're a well, fiber enthusiast, you might know what it is, um, but Rhinebeck is um, a, it's a sheep and wool, it's technically called New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And it is like an outdoor knitting festival at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds. And it's um, like one of the biggest knitting festivals um, in the U.S. And it happens like mid-October, but it didn't happen this year because of COVID. And this was like the year that I thought I was finally going to get to go to it. And it didn't happen. I mean, like I hadn't bought like tickets or anything because tickets ended up like not being sold <laughs> because it didn't happen. But... I thought I was finally going to get to go this year, and I didn't, but I still felt the need to um, patronize some of the um, sellers, and by sellers, they just mean one. <laughs> I bought some yarn from her shop, and it kind of looks like a lot, but it is a lot, but they just all spoke to me. Okay, so there is this yarn company called Earl Grey Fiber Company. I have to look at the label. And all of her yarn just, it always, like, spoke to me. And I don't, I just never really followed her closely enough to, like, know when her updates were. So I, I didn't have any yarn from her, but she did a huge update for Rhinebeck. And I bought some yarn. And so this first one is a base that she doesn't have anymore. And she actually, this yarn was a really good price because she's, like, trying to get rid of this base. Um, let me show this to you. The base is called C Camellia DK, and it is 80% U.S. Merino, 20% U.S. Rambouillet. It's 250 yards. The colorway is called Wild Ginger, and I love this purple color. This is one of my favorite colors. Um, it's kind of, I want to say, it's kind of like orchid. Um, that's what I always call it, is orchid. Um... The actual colorway is called Wild Ginger. But, um, so this yarn is not, like, something she's going to have again. This is just something she dyed special to get rid of this base, and she had a really good price on it. It is a DK weight yarn. Um, so I bought a sweater's quantity of that. I already have it hanked up, or not hanked up, skeined up. Um, I really want to knit, like, a pullover with it, but I want it to have, like, some texture because it's kind of, it's, there is some variegation in it. It's more of a tonal than a solid. So I think it would be really nice to do like um, a pullover with like a textured stitch on it. There's this one pullover that I've knit before. It's called the Estrella pullover. And it has like these kind of, um, these little star stitches. Um, I can't remember how you knit them. It's been a minute since I've knit that sweater. And I really like it. It's a DK weight pattern. The only thing I don't love is that, well, I do like it, but for this year, maybe I don't like it, is that the sweater, it, you do the three needle bind off where you separate the front to the front piece and the back piece. Um, and the only reason I don't know if I would like that is because it, it works really well in like a super wash yarn because you get a lot of drape. But because this is... Um, you know, this is not super washed. It's a wooly or wool. I feel like it might not drape as nicely and it might be kind of like bulky under the arms in that sweater. So I think what I might do is I might take that like stitch pattern that she used and just knit another sweater and incorporate that in the body. Um, so yeah, I think I already have this like caked up because I really want to cast this on. Um, I, I just, I think non super washed wools make the warmest sweater. So I'm excited to have a sweater out of this. 
um, for the winter. Um, so that is my first stash acquisition. Same thing from the same company. You're probably going to say, that's just more of the yarn you just showed me. And to that, I would say pish posh. They're different, kind of. I just really, I like purple. Purple, I think, just looks, like, really good with red hair. Purple and blush pink, those are my colors. Um, this is a super wash yarn by the same company. Um, and she, uh, this is, like, more hand-dyed, I would say. Um, it's def The other one is definitely, like, a semi-solid tonal. And this one is definitely more of, like, a traditional, like, hand-dyed yarn. It's a DK weight again. Um... It's, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see, like, the variegation in it. Like, there's some speckles there. Um, this colorway is called Sweater Weather, um, and it's just um, her Superwash Merino um, base, um, and it is DK. So, you know, honestly, now that I look at, like, this DK next to this DK, I don't know. I wonder if this one is, might knit up closer to a worsted weight. But, so I have a sweater's amount of this, um, and I'm really excited to use this. It's just so lovely. Um, I really like her yarns because, like, they, she, you know, they're hand-dyed, but they're really, um, I think they're very wearable, like, if you're going to knit a sweater. She, she has a lot of colorways that are still, like, um, variegated and speckled and interesting, but they're still very wearable. Sometimes, you know... Sometimes I find, like, I see hand-dyed yarn in the skein, and it just looks so beautiful, and it's like a work of art. And then sometimes you knit it up, and it's like, oh, maybe I didn't want a whole sweater of that, you know? But these are definitely more um, wearable hand-dyed yarns, I think. And then the last sweaters quantity that I got, I don't think this is as bad because it's fingering weight, so I just needed these three skeins. Um, but... This is definitely a lot pinker than the other two colorways. I know you're probably looking at it. <laughs> it looks like I bought three different bases of the same colorway. And I did it. They all definitely in like daylight look different. Um, but this is called um, Briar Rose. That's a colorway. And it's a super wash merino yak base. So you kind of get um, like this darker look to the colorway because the yak is like a I think it's like a dark gray fiber um and this is uh yeah it's just a fingering weight 437 yards it's called gunpowder sock and it's really like it's kind of in between like a pink and a purple but I bought this um with the intention of knitting um the Pink Velvet Sweater by Andrea Mowry. Um, it, if you, if you know the pattern, um, it's, it's a crop sweater. I'm not going to knit a crop because I just don't do crop sweaters, but it has color work at the top, but the color work on top is done with that Surrey Alpaca base. Um, so Surrey Alpaca is like a fluffy fiber. It's similar to mohair, um, but the yarn that they make out of it is slightly thicker than a mohair yarn. So it's more of a fingering weight while the mohair um, is uh, lace weight. And so you do the coloring work in just the Surrey alpaca base. And so it's color work, but it's like fluffy. Um, so I think um, I know the yarn that I'm going to use um, for the top and it's by a different yarn dyer. It's by Stress Knits and it's her Black Dahlia colorway. And I think that's going to go really, really well with this. I probably would have bought Surrey Alpaca from this dyer, Earl Grey Fibers. Um, but she doesn't, I don't know if she doesn't make it or if she just didn't have it. Um, but I think I'm going to use that along with this um, to make that sweater. Um, I actually saw it stressing that she has a podcast and I saw her uh, sweater. She did a pink velvet. And I didn't really have any intention of knitting it before I saw her um, knitting it and then wearing it. And I just thought it was so lovely. Um, and I just think this colorway is going to look so beautiful. Um, that's a nice thing about knitting worsted weight sweaters is that 
they cost like half as much about uh, about half as much as buying like DK weight from a hand dyer. So you only need three skeins versus like um, like five or six skeins of a DK weight, and it costs like they cost the same per skein. So yeah, I think this one I might end up knitting maybe like more like maybe March or something because um, I try, I tend to knit uh, heavier heavier weight sweaters right now. So um, maybe it was a little bit of an excessive yarn acquisition, but I love all those yarns so much. And I'm so excited to knit with them. Okay, everyone, that concludes another episode of Speckled Red Knits. Um, I'm so happy to have had you here from my little spiel. Um, this is episode seven. We've come a long way since episode one. Um, the weather is much cooler now, so in upcoming episodes, you'll probably see a lot more of my sweaters. You know, I said in the last episode that I was going to make a podcast of just all the sweaters I've knit, and I did have plans to do it, and then they just got derailed, and I also didn't realize how many sweaters I had, so I kind of need to rethink how I'm going to film this so it's not a three-hour podcast. Um, but I think um, I'll probably do that, and I'll put it up around Christmas time. It'll be like a little bonus episode with all the sweaters I've knit. Um, there are no current knit-alongs right now. Like I said, there probably will be soon. Um, anything that I talked about in this episode, I'll link below. Um, again, if you want to catch that shop update, it'll be the only time I have Christmas, winter, holiday bags in the shop, and it's November 28th at... 5 p.m. Eastern time, um, but I will link that in the description for you. Um, I'll also put uh, where you can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry. We do have a Ravelry page um, for the podcast, and that will be linked below too. Um, and I'm sure by the time I talk to you next time, I'll have more gift knitting, and maybe I can show that to you next time. Maybe things will be gifted by then. Um, but in the meantime, happy knitting, happy gift knitting, and uh, happy holidays. It's, um, this will probably go out right before Thanksgiving. Um, so happy, happy uh, Thanksgiving knitting.